Hey guys, welcome to my food channel where I aim to cook a vegan version of every national dish in the world. It's week four and this week's country is Andorra. Before we get started, let's just check out where Andorra is. Andorra is a tiny European country. It's located just here in the Pyrenees Mountains, wedged in between South France and North Spain. Andorran food is mainly influenced by uh, Catalonian cuisine. So Catalonia is this area of North East Spain, just here. There are also some influences from France and also Italy. Andorra's national dish is called escudella. So escudella is a hearty stew. It's got a lot of different ingredients in it. It's usually made up of meat, vegetables, chickpeas, and pasta. Most of the flavor from the dish comes from boiling meat and bones in water for an extended period of time. So essentially making a bone broth. So what we need to do is make a vegan bone broth. Sounds a bit weird. We're not gonna be using any bones but we are going to be using a couple of key ingredients that I'm going to go through now. The first and probably the most important ingredient is the shiitake mushroom. I know you probably don't say it like that, but how else are you supposed to say something that's got a double I in it? Anyway, these little things, they're going to replace a lot of that savory umami flavor you would be getting from the bones. Not only that, but they're also packed full of good vitamins and minerals. So they're giving you some of that health benefit that goes with having bone broth as well. Second ingredient I want to talk about is seaweed. So I've used wakame seaweed in this. You can also use kombu, which I've heard is really good for, for this type of thing. If you can't find these types of seaweed in your local store, you can just use the nori sheets, which usually get used for uh, sushi rolls. If you're thinking this is going to make the dish taste like seaweed or taste like the sea, don't worry about that. This just adds another layer of flavor to it, the sort of a salty umami flavor. It's also, again, packed full of good vitamins and minerals, really good source of omega-3 as well. Now, the recipe we're going to use for the broth, you can use that whenever you want to make a vegan bone broth. It doesn't necessarily have to be just for this dish. You can make more and freeze it and use it later, or you can just drink some on the spot. It's really good stuff. Keep that in mind. Last ingredient I want to talk about doesn't have anything to do with the broth, but it does have something to do with a key component of escudella, which is what they call pilotas. So pilotas are basically big meatballs that they put into the dish at the end. Um, they're usually made from ground uh, beef and pork. Obviously, we're not using any of those products, so we need to make a vegan minced meat, essentially. I found the best way to do this is to use a combination of Swiss brown mushrooms, which I don't have here as a prop because I still need to go and buy them. Blend those up in a food processor with firm or extra firm tofu. The final thing about escudella in general, this is a really rich, hearty dish. I can imagine in the winter in the Andorran mountains, this would be absolutely perfect. It's a pretty cold June evening here in Melbourne, Australia, so I'm really looking forward to get stuck into this one. As always, you can find a list of ingredients and the recipe below this video. Let's get started. With stock, you really don't have to be neat and tidy with the vegetables. Just roughly chop them, and don't be scared to include bits you wouldn't usually eat, like the onion skins, carrot ends, and celery leaves. With the garlic, place the flat side of the knife over them and apply pressure to break the skins. We're using potato peel in this recipe, but you obviously don't want to waste the potato itself. After you've peeled them, submerge them in a bowl with cold water so they don't brown and transfer to the fridge for later use. Once you've chopped all the veggies, add the onions, carrots and celery to a dry pan over a high heat. You want to char the veggies at this stage, which will add extra depth of flavor to the final stock. Add a glug of olive oil to the pan before adding all the other ingredients. Three cloves of garlic. The peel of two potatoes. Four bay leaves. 20 black peppercorns. A handful of parsley stalks. 90 grams of shiitake mushrooms. 30 grams of seaweed. 
one heat tablespoon of dark miso paste, and finally two tablespoons of soy sauce. Stir all that together, then pour in 14 cups of water. Bring to a simmer and cook on a low heat with the lid on for six hours. Check back on the stock every couple of hours, give it a stir, and add some salt if you think it's needed. Just remember that the miso paste and soy sauce are both high in salt content, so don't overdo it. After six hours, the liquid will have reduced by around half. Get another pot, place a colander on top, and drain the liquid through the colander. Make sure you get as much liquid out as possible. You don't want to miss out on any of that brothy goodness. The broth is now ready. Set aside four cups for the escudella and store the rest in the fridge or freezer. Now on to the meatballs or pilotas. Take 200 grams of Swiss brown mushrooms and blend in a food processor or blender. Add 200 grams of firm or extra firm tofu and blend into a coarse paste. If you have a larger food processor, you can add the mushrooms and tofu at the same time. I'm using a smaller Nutribullet, so the mushrooms have to go in first. As you can see, the paste looks a lot like pork mince. Add some olive oil to a frying pan on medium heat. Fry half a chopped onion and one clove of minced garlic for three minutes. Add the mushroom tofu mix, one tablespoon of sunflower kernels, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a quarter of a teaspoon of grated nutmeg. Make sure not to overdo the nutmeg because it can be quite overpowering. Fry all that up for 10 minutes or until the moisture has evaporated and the mix is relatively dry. Switch off the heat, then add a handful of chopped parsley leaves and a tablespoon of plain white flour. Season with salt and pepper, then transfer to a chopping board until it's cool enough to handle. Divide into four equal parts and place a layer of cling film over a plate. Use your hands to mold the mixture into a sausage shape. Then wrap tightly with the cling film and tie off the ends. Repeat this with the rest of the mix, then place the four pilotas in the fridge for later. Now we're ready to cook the stew. So add a glug of olive oil to a pan on medium heat. Add one sliced onion, one thickly sliced carrot, two chopped celery sticks, one chopped leek, and three cloves of minced garlic. Fry for five minutes. Remember those potatoes you peeled earlier for the stock? Well, their time has come. Drain them and add them to the pan. Add the four cups of broth, making sure the potatoes are covered, bring to the boil and simmer on a low heat for 20 minutes. While the stew is cooking, you can get on with the pasta. Add the shells to a pot of salted boiling water and cook until al dente. Drain the pasta and set aside for later. When the 20 minutes is up, add a quarter of a head of sliced white cabbage. Cook for a further 10 minutes or until the potato is cooked through. During this time, Fetch the pilotas from the fridge and roll them in plain white flour. Check to see the potatoes are cooked through. Then transfer them to the serving bowls, two pieces for each person. Gently place the pilotas into the stew. Cook for four minutes. Then flip the pilotas over and cook for a further four minutes. Remove the pilotas and add to the serving bowls with the potatoes. Now add half a can of chickpeas, the cooked pasta shells, and a handful of chopped parsley. Switch off the heat, give it a stir, and season with salt and pepper if necessary. Ladle the stew over the potatoes and pilotas. Then serve immediately. Damn, that looks good. We've done it! Andorra Nesquilla, vegan style. It looks fantastic. I just want to get stuck in, so I will. Oh, yes. Mm. 
Tastes so good, so much flavor. Most of it coming from the time and effort we spent into making that broth. Now, if you're looking to have that with some wine, I'd probably recommend something like a Pinot Noir, which has got a, that sort of mushroomy, earthy flavors, which will go really well with the, with the flavors that we've put into the broth. I've got a bottle of Cote de Bone Village, so Burgundy, Pinot Noir. Not too expensive, pretty good. Or, if you wanted to go a little bit left of center, try this with Madeira. I'm not talking about the really sweet Madeiras, but maybe something like a Vadeu or Social could be pretty interesting with the, this dish. If you like my video, please click like and subscribe to my channel and tune in next week where I'll be cooking a vegan version of the national dish of Angola. Bye for now.